Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my god! 911 emergency? Give me an ambulance out here! What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops. Real crooks. Real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress, from impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. If you could see the world of crime through the eyes of a police officer, you'd see long stretches of routine punctuated by moments of sheer terror. It's these moments and how officers react to them that can mean the difference between life and death. So buckle up. In the next hour, you'll see some of the most terrifying moments police cameras have ever captured. Brisbane, Australia. A pursuit scorches through suburban streets. This runaway gray sedan has counterfeit plates. And the 19-year-old behind the wheel has a need for speed. Flying around curves, the renegade driver refuses to ease off the gas. When this road warrior hits the highway, he pushes his car even faster. Without an ounce of caution, he bombs through the gaps in traffic. A motorcycle unit tries to keep up with the speeding suspect. But when the teenage terror speeds up to 190 kilometers an hour, the motorcycle can't handle it. The officer takes a nasty fall, but miraculously, he survives. Meanwhile, the fleeing teen is way ahead of his pursuers. He's doing the equivalent of 125 miles per hour. At these speeds, the world around him is just a blur. Suddenly, he veers off the highway, only to find himself faced with slower moving traffic. But the suspect won't slow down, not even for an intersection. Big mistake. At double the speed limit, all it takes is a glancing blow from this blue car to send him spinning off the road. Immediately, police are all over the wrecked speed demon, and he's in custody moments later. Amazingly, no one lost their life in this high-speed nightmare. But for the city of Brisbane, and one battle-scarred officer, it will be impossible to forget the fastest Australian chase ever caught on tape. When you run from the law, you always risk the lives of innocent drivers. And you never know who those innocent drivers are gonna be. Southeast Georgia, a drunk driver blazes down a country road with officers in pursuit. <laughs> At these speeds, he's an accident just waiting to happen, and Lord help anyone who gets in his way. He makes an abrupt right, but somehow holds the road. The suspect grows more confident with every curve, but his drunken recklessness is no match for what's ahead. 
he hits a blind curve at 80 miles an hour. Suddenly, he begins to fishtail, and then it happens. The collision rams the other car onto the shoulder. The front end of the suspect's car disintegrates. Amazingly, he not only survives, he runs on. <laughs> now it's a hit and run. But what police are about to discover is unbelievable. The victims in the other car were the drunken man's own wife and daughter. <laughs> Miraculously, they escape with only minor injuries. This man never thought his family would be the victim of a drunk driver, let alone that he would be that driver. Any pursuit is frightening, but when you're pursuing a robbery suspect who's armed, who's high on drugs, and who's willing to do anything to get away, then it becomes terrifying. Farmington Hills, Michigan. A desperate crackhead leads officers on an amazing chase. It began only minutes ago, when the man held up a convenience store. After the suspect made his escape, the terrified clerk called 911. Got robbed at the total gas station. Okay, which way did he go? He went um, south on Hawthorne. What kind of car? He's in the station wagon. What color? Officers in the area immediately spotted the suspect's beat-up station wagon. They signaled for it to pull over. Two police dash cams captured it all. Southbound Hall said they'll be attempting to stop that vehicle. Okay, yeah, southbound Hall said north of Grand River. When the car headed to the side of the road, it seemed the suspect had every intention of giving up. 112 is the vehicle stopped. Radio really stopped. But that would have meant ending his drug binge. Suddenly, the man decided to floor it. Now the pursuit is in high gear, with the suspect taking insane risks, flying through a red light and speeding toward the freeway. The officer is pumped with adrenaline. Westbound on Grand River, failing to stop. But his dispatcher helps him remain cool. Okay, sir, the dispatcher westbound on Grand River from Hawkeye. We're getting out the eastbound M5. On the freeway, an unmarked unit is waiting to put a quick end to this chase. But the officer inside is stunned when the driver suddenly aims his car directly at him. Seconds before impact, the station wagon swerves. It misses the officer. I'm give me an update. He's in the media. Out of control. The suspect steers wildly and skids off the road. Amazing, he regains control and tries to make his way back onto the pavement, clipping the unmarked cruiser in the process. But the officer keeps him at bay until more backup arrives. When the suspect manages to get back on the road, he steers right into a trap. Police have him boxed in. There's only one way out, and the suspect goes for it. He makes a hard left and is back on the media. With every passing minute, the suspect becomes more desperate. He's determined to escape or die trying. This pursuit has gone from reckless to life-threatening. Police were ordered to shut this guy down. This time, there's no escape. The patrol car rams the station wagon and sends it crashing headlong into the lead police vehicle. Both cruisers screech to a stop. The station wagon wedged between them. Guns drawn, police descend on the car. They pull the dazed man from the vehicle and take him down. The suspect was charged with armed robbery and eluding police. He faces years behind bars. This pursuit began with a desperate holdup. Got robbed at the total gas station. And quickly led to a wild getaway. When trying to stop a crackhead willing to risk it all for drugs, an officer's best weapons are precision and perseverance. But when a driver won't give up, police reach for a more powerful weapon, teamwork. These officers were able to come together at a moment's notice to trap the suspect and 
crush any hope of escape. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video, Vigilante Justice goes out of control from a trial in the streets to a citizen's arrest when they play judge and jury they're playing with fire because when street justice takes over someone will get burned next In a line. Have you consumed any alcohol today? Caught red handed. Pick up a green color sack. Caught off guard. One mistake Speed around, mate, is line. all cops need <laughs> to catch them by surprise. Morgan County, Georgia. Deputy Kenny Stewart attempts to pull over a car for speeding, but the driver won't stop. And the sound of the patrol car's siren only makes him drive faster. All right, let's ride. Unable to shake the deputy, the suspects try the surface streets. Yes, that's be an exit, but their escape route is blocked by a slow-moving mobile home. The driver punches the gas, and Deputy Stewart stays right with him. We're still moving this back. At the next turn, the driver is suddenly faced with a 28-ton semi. Only moments to spare, he races past it. But the deputy knows these suspects are taking too many chances to be running from a mere traffic ticket. And then he sees the passenger throw a cloth bag out the window. Pick up a green color sack on the right hand side of the road. The deputy has no doubt the suspects have dumped evidence. Size of a uh, pillowcase, if not bigger. But he can't give up the chase to retrieve it. Where is it at? It's going to be on the right hand side of the road. And the right hand side of the road. So it's like mission. The suspect sees a break. He starts taking even more chances with no sign of slowing down. Speed around 90 to 100 miles an hour. As the driver speeds past this truck, there's barely room enough to breathe. By now, the suspect feels there's no stopping him. But the sheriff's deputies aren't finished. Down the road, they lay down stop sticks, a spiked barrier that will instantly shred the suspect's tires. Okay, they ain't got nowhere to go now. They're right out of the corner. Hang on, hang on. Deputy Stewart falls back. The suspects think they're home free, but up ahead, they face the startling reality. Two stop sticks block the road, and patrol cars barricade the shoulder. Sheriff's deputies immediately surround the car. Seconds later, the men are handcuffed. Then deputies finally get a chance to examine the contents of the sack they retrieved from the side of the road. The deputy pulls out bag after bag after bag of pot, worth a total of $12,000. Already facing charges of reckless driving and eluding deputies, the men now face another charge, possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. 819 dispatch, we're 1095, two times. When these drug runners became runaways, they decided to lighten their load. And it was up to the Morgan County Sheriff's deputies to recover their sack full of pot and bag these crooks for good. 819 dispatch, we're 1095, two times. When police and fire personnel arrive on the scene of an accident, the first priority is the safety of the victims. But what happens when they can't get to the people who need their help? Fire and police units rush to the scene of a terrifying accident. A man is trapped inside this van. Copy 116, paramedics en route. Through the window, rescuers see a wheelchair in the back of the van. 
They realize this man cannot get out under his own power. And to make matters worse, the van knocked over a wooden utility pole when it was run off the road. Power lines are down. The live wires are draped all over the total van. They call in the power company, but the clock is ticking. The man was carrying several full cans of gasoline. With electrical sparks being thrown by the downed wires, it's a rescuer's worst case scenario. The power company works fast, but then the unthinkable happens. The gasoline erupts, turning this mangled van into a two-ton oven. Rescuers must act now. The combination of flames and smoke are deadly. Risking their own lives, firemen bash out a window and jam a high-pressure hose into the blazing van. Water and electricity are potentially a lethal mix, but the driver will die for sure if they don't get that fire out. A rescuer breaks another window, risking electrocution as he desperately tries to pry open the door. A utility worker tells him the electricity in the down wires is finally shut off. The firemen waste no time grabbing the jaws of life. Moments later, the firemen pull the victim from the smoldering mass of metal. His wheelchair was only inches away from the gas can. The driver is singed and sore, but more importantly, he's alive. Live power lines strewn across metal, gasoline in the back of the van, and a paralyzed victim. It could have been a recipe for disaster and death, but these men and women are sworn to save lives. They're used to overcoming obstacles. For them, it was just another day on the job. Sedgwick, Kansas. Sheriff's deputies pull over a man in a 10-gallon hat. He's been driving like he's had a few gallons to drink. What's wrong with you driving today? You almost caused a wreck. Have, have you consumed any alcoholic beverages today? Yeah. The deputy returns to his cruiser. Within seconds, the suspect lays down rubber, and they're off on a drunken pursuit. The man in the black hat blows through a red light, narrowly avoiding cross traffic. The suspect has a sizable lead, using every available ounce of his horsepower to get away. He makes a sudden right turn, cutting off a shocked motorist. Other units join the pursuit. Within seconds, they're hot on his heels, snaking toward a residential neighborhood. The chase roars down a quiet lane, tripling the speed limit. Up ahead, another deputy waits to join in, but the suspect suddenly swerves right. He may be drunk, but he remembers the signal. Out on the main road, he crosses over the double yellow and blows through two flashing red lights. He cuts through more traffic and races through a construction site. He speeds up even more, charging dangerously close to a motorcycle. The deputies have had enough. They need to corral this runaway right now. The drunken man races toward another busy intersection. If he tries to run this red light, he may not be so lucky. He's blocked. Again, he just pushes through. But here comes help. A sheriff's massive sport utility vehicle blocks his way. He tries ramming the cruiser behind him, but he's quickly taken down, hard. With a suspect this reckless, officers have to act fast. Before he has a chance to struggle, they drag the man from the car and cuff him. When this wannabe cowboy led a roaring pursuit through this small Kansas town, sheriff's deputies cut him off at the pass. Now he's lost his cowboy hat and his freedom. Next on World's Wildest Police Video, small-time hoods become big-time offenders. A nickel-and-dime job becomes a hit-and-run felony. And a spark of protest becomes a firestorm of rage. It's escalation to the highest degree. Next. They think it's a good joke. They think it's fun time. 
They think it's a game. This is a game to this guy. But as the road runs out, and their luck runs dry, the game turns deadly. And the good times end. When the police let civilians ride with officers on patrol, it's called a ride-along. What they see is usually pretty routine, but sometimes they get much more than they bargained for. Red Bank, Tennessee. An officer pursues a reckless drunk driver. But he isn't alone in the cruiser. He has a guest on board for a ride along, the chief's 18 year old grandson. Neither of them was expecting a ride like this. The officer now has two jobs, to catch the bad guy and keep his special passenger safe. The suspect slaloms wildly down the twisting road. One bad skid, and he could head on with an oncoming vehicle. All the officer can do is keep pace and wait for the drunk to slip up. The suspect pushes his luck and barely misses another car. But soon, he pushes his luck too far. The pickup's rear end fishtails off the road. But when the tires find traction again, the suspect bolts towards the woods. He bails. And the chief's grandson is eager to help chase him down. After a brief foot pursuit, they finally get the cuffs on him. Now it's time to take him for a ride along to six months in jail. If he wanted to follow in his grandfather's footsteps, this young man got a good head start. He bailed. Even better than some rookies. Mayhem, anarchy, chaos. But Dan Indonesia. Skyrocketing inflation pushes the population to the flashpoint of civil war. Tanks are sent in to quell the swelling crowd. But they realize their show of force may provoke more unrest. So they decide to pull back, hoping to cool the heated mob and avoid a bloody confrontation. But what happens next is shocking. As they withdraw, the frenzied crowd blazes across the city like wildfire looting and burning everything in their path. Anything not tied down is fed into one of the many raging bonfires engulfing the city. The mob's rampaging free-for-all turns a once thriving downtown into a smoking ruin. Days later in the capital city of Jakarta, officers are called in to disperse another angry mob. Suddenly, a wave of bodies slams into the line of officers. Armed with assault rifles loaded with rubber bullets, they fire warning volleys into the air. The mob scatters, allowing police to subdue and arrest the most violent offenders. But a small pocket of resistance remains. Officers fire more rubber bullets, and the crowd scatters for good. Several protesters are injured in the melee. When political changes inflame the population, often it's the police who are caught in the middle. Regardless of their politics, these officers swore an oath to uphold the law. Today, they kept the paradise of Indonesia from becoming paradise lost. Canton, Georgia. This speeding white car matches the description of a stolen vehicle. With two suspects in the car, the officer can only pray backup arrives before this chase terminates. But this pursuit is running out of road, and thanks to the fast approaching dead end, things are about to get dangerous in a hurry. The car skids to a stop next to a construction crew. The driver bailed. Not taking any chances, the officer draws his weapon and goes after the foot bailing suspect. Struggling with the man, the officer can do nothing to keep the female suspect from escaping into the woods. Luckily, the operator of this backhoe makes sure she isn't going anywhere. Faced with the heavy machinery, she surrenders immediately. 
This pursuit could have left the cop outnumbered and without backup. But when an officer is alone, he'll take help from anyone or anything. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Insane actions from extreme suspects. An armor-plated policeman meets a gun-wielding wise guy. And a five-finger discount becomes a four-wheel getaway. They're under the gun, out of their minds, and over the edge. Next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. This guy's not coming, right? They may seem tame, you know what he but they're ready to strike. Uh -oh. When they run wild, everyone is their prey. To deal with these animals, you need more than a whip and a chair. Suspect is bailing. He's on foot. You need a cage. Code four. Suspect now coming. Shoplifting is a big problem for retailers. So store security has become state of the art. Even so, some foolish criminals would rather risk their lives than pay for merchandise. Golden, Colorado. This man is parked illegally in front of a department store. But considering what he's about to do, that's the least of his crimes. As he enters the store, he checks for any security guards. There's no one in sight. So the shifty suspect heads to the men's department. He looks around one last time. Then he grabs all the clothes he can carry. But he won't be keeping his new wardrobe. Outside, he drops the clothes as mall security appears out of nowhere. The suspect makes it inside his vehicle. The police block his path. In the struggle, one of the security men is nearly run over. This crazed suspect would rather kill than be caught. The officer with the car swoops around to block the suspect again. But still, the man gets away for about one more minute. By now, every exit has been blocked. Escape is impossible. Macon, Georgia. Cameras capture every inch of this department store in step frame video. A sharp-eyed security guard spots a suspicious-looking customer in the men's clothing area. The guard watches the man take an armful of clothing into a dressing room. When he emerges, much of it is gone. That's because it's in his shopping bag. While the thief makes a beeline for the exit, the guard alerts other security officers. The shoplifter is quickly apprehended. But as he is led to a detention area, the man suddenly makes a break for it. He bolts through an emergency exit and enters the parking lot. But in his panic, the thief can't find his getaway car. In a lot this big, it's easy to lose your car, even for a crook. He runs around in circles, desperately trying to locate his lost vehicle. Macon police join mall security in chasing down the suspect. Just as they're about to grab him, the man finds his truck and gets inside. He throws it in reverse and hits the gas, but an unmarked police car blocks his path. The suspect floors the accelerator, but the car won't budge. The man is totally boxed in. Still, he won't surrender. Instead, he puts the truck into drive and rams the vehicle in front of him. The SUV is bigger than the man's pickup, but incredibly, he plows it out of the way and makes his escape. Racing through the parking lot at 80 miles per hour, the suspect nearly runs over a pedestrian. Then as he cuts towards the exit, the man almost collides with several cars. He tears blindly into the street, never seeing an oncoming big rig. The massive semi misses him by inches. Last in the clear, the suspect tears up the road. He's lucked out this time. But thanks to these cameras, police have everything they need to catch him. Some shoplifters will do just about anything to steal a few pieces of merchandise. But sooner or later, one way or another, they wind up paying in hard time. Tucson, Arizona.
Arizona. Officers find a man reported missing. He's asleep in a car. Family members have told police the man is suicidal, and because he may be armed, officers can't risk waking him. But they have a high-tech solution. They'll send in a robot, equipped with a camera. Using the robot's cameras, officers begin a reconnaissance mission. First, the robot drops tire spikes, so the man can't run. Next, the robot takes a silent look inside the car. He's still asleep. A SWAT team stealthily moves in. Then they make an ominous discovery. The man is armed to the teeth with a 9 millimeter and a shotgun. Quietly, the SWAT team backs off. Suddenly, the suspect awakens. You awake, Alex? He can't believe his eyes. He takes aim at the robot. Police negotiators try to talk him down. No, bro, don't do that. Put the gun down, Alex. Come on. But he seems to think it's all a joke. His erratic behavior makes him extremely unpredictable. I'll be asleep if he lets me alone. Negotiators try to keep him talking about anything they can. Is there anything I can do for you, bro? Let me know. Uh, two burgers, the fries, order on But when he decides it's time to leave, Police decide it's time for action. When the suspect exits the car to remove the spikes, the robot's camera zooms in on his hands. They're empty. SWAT makes their move. Shotgun-fired beanbags hit the suspect in the back and chest. Because he may have been concealing a weapon, officers take no chances. The non-lethal rounds disable him so officers can safely take him into custody. Thanks to training, teamwork, and technology, these Tucson officers have ended a deadly standoff without bloodshed. Greenfield, Indiana. The man in this car has just beaten his wife. When she called 911, he went running. Now he leads police on a high-speed chase on dangerous ice-covered road. To make matters worse, he's also drunk. The husband has a history of domestic violence and drunk driving. Now he's putting the lives of innocent children at risk by speeding through a residential neighborhood. This guy's not coming for anything. He's all over the place. The man runs stop signs left and right. He's blind drunk and in a blind rage. A bad combination for anyone who gets in his way. Because hunting is popular in this part of the country, police fear the man may own firearms. Suddenly, he turns back toward home. If police can't stop him in time, there could be a standoff. Dispatch, by the unit 911 at caller's location. Suspect may be in route. The abusive husband tears into a church parking lot but he's not going to attend services. He's just taking a shortcut home. With the car still rolling, the man leaps out into the snow. Suspect is bailing, he's on foot. He's headed straight for his wife. If there are guns in the house, this could become a hostage situation. A dozen officers dive in after him. Please, put your hands up! Put your hands up! Stuck knee deep in snow, the suspect is quickly overtaken and put under arrest. His days of getting drunk and beating his wife are over. It's that code four. Incidents of domestic abuse used to go unreported. Now cops are showing zero tolerance for this crime. Any man who beats his wife, drives while intoxicated, puts lives in danger, belongs in just one place, behind bars. Next on World's Wildest Police Videos. Desperate people. I thought you might have a gun. In their most desperate hour, a dehydrated dope fiend ends up in the drink. Some marijuana missionaries get holy in a hurry. And a cold water crisis needs a cool headed cop. Grab the room. From hot footed criminals Hold him. to danger on ice. Next. Whether they're a threat to others I thought you might have a gun. or a threat to themselves. 
It's an officer's job oh, to bring him in Coming back. alive. Driver, pull over. The war against interstate drug smuggling takes more than fast cars. The best weapons an officer has against drug runners is his training and quick thinking. Milledgeville, Georgia. Two officers pull over a car for speedy. But when they approach the two men in the car, the officers can tell this won't be a simple traffic stop. The police could take the men into custody right now, but instead, they pretend they didn't notice anything. All right, let me get you out, take my poor job, we'll give you a warning, okay? The driver never suspects what's really going on. We'll get you a warning, get you on your way. The officers are just playing it cool. Where are you headed to? To keep the suspects from getting nervous. Where y'all coming from? When the partners get together, it turns out the suspects have different stories. Never going to South Carolina. That's not what I got. Okay. That means someone is lying. Is okay? But the officers stay okay. friendly, even guns? during a routine pat down of the driver. Next, they get the passenger out of the car. I need you to turn around real quick. Uh, Mr. Samuel, you got some type of legal drugs in your front crotch there. It's a tense moment, but again, they put the suspect at ease. Is it just a little weed? Is that all it is? All right, don't worry about it, man. Just give a hand to Will. Reach down there and pass to me real slow, OK? The officers make it seem like no big deal. Just hold that right there. That all you got? <laughs> I thought you might have a gun or something. What neither suspect realizes is that the officers now have probable cause to search the car. They handcuff the passenger and start searching the trunk. It takes only a moment. Hold him. Within seconds, both men are under arrest. And the reason is obvious. It's a duffel bag full of marijuana. As the officer pulls out pound after pound of pot, 13. the passenger realizes the error of his ways. I go to church. My dad is preaching. My grandma is preaching. He told me. But it's too late. 17. Because now they're facing charges of drug possession with intent to sell. Uh, got about 17 pounds. Had these officers acted too quickly, passenger. They could have found themselves in a pursuit or a fight, but the officers used brains instead of brawn to make a huge bust, proving that when officers use their wits, drug runners don't have a prayer. I'm sorry, this subject praying to God real loud. Try that again. Officers are sworn to protect and serve. Upholding that vow often means putting their own lives on the line. Sometimes they do it in ways they never thought possible. Des Moines, Iowa, a woman is jumped from a bridge into this freezing river. The woman's survival seems highly unlikely. Her rescue, almost impossible. Chunks of ice have formed on the river's surface, making it difficult to even locate the body. But as a powerful spotlight pans across the river, the officers suddenly see the woman's head. Not knowing if the victim is still alive, Officer John Laporte springs into action. Grab the rope. After he secures a heavy anchor rope around his waist, he yanks off his boots. Even his partners can't believe what he's about to do. You can't go in there too damn cold. Without a moment's hesitation, Officer Laporte takes the icy plunge. We got the rope, just don't let go of the rope. Dodging the floating ice, he swims straight out to the victim. With every stroke, the officer loses precious body heat. Got her? Got her! With a firm hold on the woman, Laporte fights his way back through the frigid water to safety. He's coming back. As numbness sets in, the officer helps hoist the woman's body out of the water. Tie the rope around the body, then get John out of there. The shaking officer is then rushed to a waiting ambulance, where he's treated by a team of paramedics. The victim is pulled up the embankment. An officer immediately starts CPR. At first, his efforts appear to be futile, 
but suddenly the woman regains consciousness. Fire and rescue teams rush the victim up an icy hill. An arriving helicopter airlifts her to a local hospital for emergency care. Amazingly, she lives. In this victim's darkest hour, when she needed help the most, she got it in the form of Officer John Laporte of the Des Moines PD. Got her? Got her. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, a stoner raises hell. On the streets of Atlanta, it's the devil down in Georgia. Next. Atlanta, Georgia. Police spotted the driver of this car trying to break open a fire hydrant with a tire iron. When confronted, he jumped into his car and ran. Now he swerves through traffic at breakneck speed. Officer Tony Carrado is in pursuit. 1020, just past Morosco, still northbound of Piedmont, to about 75 miles an hour. 1020, there's one occupant in the vehicle. What Officer Corrado doesn't know is that this suspect is sky high on cocaine. The man thinks he can drive anywhere and at any speed. The suspect crosses the center line, straight toward oncoming headlights. Crazy son of a bitch. He slams across the median again, regardless of who or what might be in his way. Coming in dark color. Stand by a minute. When he turns, he doesn't even slow down. The cocaine makes the suspect feel invincible, but it also clouds his judgment. Right now, he's headed straight toward the busiest section of downtown Atlanta. When an officer tries to block his path, the deranged driver swerves back into oncoming traffic. Attempting to break through the fog of drugs in the suspect's brain, Officer Corrado shouts for the suspect to pull over. Pull the car over! But his only response is a gesture of contempt. The department brings in a helicopter to track the suspect through city streets. But moments later, the suspect ends the chase on his own. Making a wild left turn, the suspect crashes through a chain link fence and into the city of Atlanta's freshwater reservoir. 1020, code for the other unit. Officer Corrado rushes in. Get off my right now! Moments later, the suspect is pulled from the water and arrested. 1020, from Trader Taxi. The suspect's car tore through the steel link fence and sank in five seconds. It took a wrecking crew two hours to pull it out of the water. This chase started when the suspect tried to break open a fire hydrant. He later told officers he was thirsty and wanted a drink. He got more water than he ever needed when he made a wrong turn into the reservoir. 1020, 41, 22, The suspect was charged with endangerment, evasion, and DUI. But that wasn't all. He was also fined $80,000 for contaminating Atlanta's fresh water supply. Crime. It's yesterday's tragedy. It's today's turmoil. It's tomorrow's nightmare. Crime isn't going away. But knowing how crimes happen, when they happen, and why they happen, is your only chance to keep them from happening to you.